Thank God for taking us through the course of last week. Hallelujah. For our love host to be in his presence on our Lord's day. Hallelujah. This morning it's Mission Sunday. Praise the Lord Jesus. We are just a mission. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are here for no other reason. But just to lift up the worship of the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There's something about the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, this time right there, the song and the mention of his name, something can take place. The name that is above every name this morning, Jesus saves. Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. Let us worship the Lord. Let's praise the Lord Jesus. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Amen. God spoke to Philip and said, 
now you want to go, you want to go down the way that is from Jerusalem to Gaza. That's all God said. He didn't tell Philip it why. But Philip got up and went. Yes. And when the rest is history, yes. with the conversion of the Ethiopian you know, I just want to hear from God. I want his hand of correction to be on my life. It's not enough to say I'm a Pentecostal. Amen. I want to say a special word to our newly baptized persons here. Yes. Amen. Yes. Seek the Lord. Amen. Seek to be converted. Yes. Those of the Holy Ghost, receive the Holy Ghost today. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're empty. Yes. I, 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 I don't want to say the word is coming to me, but you're empty. Yes. It, and uh, the word that came when I was meditating is that it's a good move that you've made yes. to put on the name of Jesus. Yes. It's a good move. And every time I see young people accept the Lord, I remember that I accepted the Lord when I was young. Yes. And it's not that I was a disadvantaged youth as they always say, you know, cringing in a corner and there's no way out. Some said it with a guy in church. Oh no. I wasn't like that. I might say I had everything going for me. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And you can talk to me when I mean that, that by the everything. But God pulled me out. Amen. Amen. Just as I was on the verge of saying, okay, word, here I come. God pulled me out. Amen. And I'm glad that he laid his hands on me, Amen. that he has kept me faithful unto this day. Receive the Holy Ghost today, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let the ship of your life Tossing on the sea of stripes, you need someone. If you feel so alone, and your house is not a home.
for he can satisfy. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only he can change your heart and make you whole. He'll give you peace you'll never know. Sweet love and joy and heaven too. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Now it's Mission Sunday today and it is expected that the message would be one that would motivate or inspire those who are saved to do more about souls that are around you. And I want to talk about Jesus and how he can save. This pandemic is on everybody's tongue because in one way or another we are all affected. Those who are working those who are going to school, even children, are impacted by this pandemic. For children, they don't understand why they have to be wearing this mask. And for some of them, they will wear it while they're in the presence of an adult. And as soon as they're by themselves, they take it off, or it goes under the chin or somewhere. For some of us, we want to go to places that we can't go. You go to KFC and you have to join this long line. You can't get on the inside because there are a limited number of persons that are allowed to enter at any one time. And sometimes you're longing to go to some places. Some persons, you know, would have taken a break. I would have gone abroad. Some, those not of tradition, they want to go to Thanksgiving. Or to have Christmas with those who are abroad. But it, it wasn't possible. The summer would not have passed and many teachers would in Jamaica. It has impacted us in a way that we, we, we just, it, it, it's getting to some persons, you know. So it is said that some persons, the impact, the effect that it's having is that they're slowly becoming depressed. Now, although we don't know how long this is, going to last, I want to say to us, we need some fear. <laughs> Worrying is not going to help us to get through the pandemic. And then we hear about vaccination and I. Vaccination might help. But still I want for us to really look to the Lord Jesus. Jesus came. 
Joseph was engaged to Mary. And this engagement, we understand based on their custom, would last for us a certain period. They were not yet in the part of that tradition where the marriage would have been consummated. But Mary was found with child. This was a source of embarrassment. Joseph was very considerate. He recognized the effect that this could have on Mary. So he decided he was going to put away Mary. We're going to break off this engagement. But he wasn't going to do it publicly, but he was going to do it privately. But the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and spoke to him in dream. The angel said, And she shall bring forth a son. Say chapter 121. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. So this is a baby. His people. In verse 23 it says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child. This was prophesied. And shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is God with us. So God came among us. God put on flesh and came among us. Throughout the ages, the many animals that were sacrificed, blood sacrifice was required for sins to be rolled away. But they were only rolled away for a season. No animal could have done it. The Bible has already declared that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us were born in sin and shape and in iniquity. And so there was no man worthy. Because we had inherited the sin of Adam. Adam disobeyed God and sin, and the sin affected the whole human race. But when I go to Corinthians, it says, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19. It says to wait. Which means to know. That God was in Christ. So God was not outside of Christ. God was not beside Christ. But the scripture says, God was in Christ. Now what was God doing in Christ? Man said he was reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Men trespass. Men did God wrong. Men disobeyed God. Man was condemned to die. But the Lord put on flesh. The Lord Himself put on flesh and came among us. But there are some persons who want to dispute that. No, you got it all wrong. It's the second person of the God and who came. How could you say that is God? He wasn't God. He was the Son of God, the second person of the God. You people had it all wrong. So we read in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy. Stop the arguing. You're not going to stand up. Your arguments are baseless. Stop. You're failing. And without controversy, great is the mystery of God in it. They don't understand this God in you. Okay, so they want to divide it up into different parts. First person of the God in, second person of the God in, third person. We have the scriptures to support that. I've read the Bible through a few times, and I don't find any supporting evidence. I've heard many men say this, but they are not aligned to the scriptures. We believe in right the divide in the world. So we won't cook up anything. We're going to speak the word as it is. So the scripture says, God was manifest in flesh. 
And when I look at the word manifest, it is made known. So when Jesus came, God came in the flesh. He was made known in the flesh. He demonstrated his power to show that he was no ordinary man. The Bible says he was justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. He made an appointment after his resurrection with the disciples that they were to go to a mount. When they came and they saw him, the scripture says some doubted. You know, because they had seen him being crucified. They knew he was nailed to the cross. They knew his body was taken down from the cross and he was placed in a grave. And before their eyes, the crucified one was standing. So they doubted. But thank God, all of them never doubted. The scripture says, but others worship. He declared unto them, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he continued to talk to them. Paul writes and says in Romans 5 verse 8, but God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, way back in the New Testament, we read, the scripture tells us that he is not alone. So in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11, the scripture says, I. Now, when you refer to yourself, when you say I, you're referring to yourself. I, even I. In other words, you trust the people have to say I and I, but they don't really understand what they're saying. Me, only me. He was saying, I mean, I am the Lord. Amen. And beside me, there is no Savior. So I am the Lord, he says. I put on flesh and care for the saving of the soul of me. He came. Only Jesus alone would have done that. Nobody else. Now when Isaiah 45, verse 22, 21, 22 says, tell me, he, he bring me here and yeah, let them take counsel together. Who had declared this from the ancient time? Who had told it from that time? Have I not the Lord? And there is no God left beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth for I am God and there is none else. He can save you. He can save you. There is none like him. Scripture says from everlasting to everlasting thou art God. Not a second or a third person. Sometimes you don't see, but way down the road, 
God will say, look what God has saved me from. Sometimes God provides for some persons, and sometimes he said, wait. Yeah. Yeah. I said, but look what that person God just opened the door, and I've been seeking after the Lord, and he doesn't seem to be hearing me. God's saving you from something. You don't know what he's saving you from. So just wait. Yeah. First of all, the two verse five says, for there is one God. Not a part of a God, but a fraction. There is one God. And one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Another passage said that the mediator would have to do it between two persons. Paraphrasing. But he is one. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus. And some things are not clearly understood. But he's not. Now the scripture says that he would be called Jesus. So call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. Now names are significant. Some names, you don't know the meanings, but some of these names have some connotations attached. Some demonic influences. And we wonder why is it people are called by some names and give so much trouble to give them the wrong name. You are calling demons to interact in the life of a child without even knowing it. Now, I'm no philosopher, but I'm just saying names are important. And we've got to be careful how we give names. The name Jesus is the same in name. The scripture said, whatever you're doing, word or deed, you're to do it in the name, not names. Yeah. Well, I've got news for you. Father is not the name. If I go out, go down to Port Antonio on a crowded day, and you shout Father, several men will respond in their fathers. If you shout Son, Men will respond to their sons. If you say, Liebert Jusdale, I will respond. You are going to be getting my name because you are being specific. You, my name is identifying me. Father, pardon me. Son is not the name. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, not a name. God is a name. So we read in Acts 4 verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name on the heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus has the saving name. So I'm baptized in Jesus' name. I'm baptized in the saving name. Those who had come, they were Jews, they were referred to 
them as the circumcised. They were shocked. Amen. Amen. said they were amazed. Because these persons had received the Holy Ghost. Amen. And later on, the man was given that they ought to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord because people said, they received the Holy Ghost just like we. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Only Jesus alone can save. Only Jesus alone can give you peace that you're longing for. Only Jesus can bind up your broken heart. Only Jesus understands what's going on deep down on the inside. And I want to let you know that he cares. Sometimes it looks like he's far away. Sometimes it looks like your prayer is in vain. And sometimes they just don't feel that you can move a foot. Jesus is still there. He has not forsaken you. He is still with you. Even when you don't see how. When you can't find your way out, he's still gone. He's still with you. The adversary, the enemy, the devil, he wants us to be discouraged. He wants us to doubt our Savior. He wants us to put our trust in men and to believe if this person do this, I'll be okay. But I'd like to let you know that only Jesus can save your soul. Only Jesus can touch your body and make you whole. Only Jesus can turn your situations around. Man can do it. So you might use a brother or a sister, but the source is not. It's Jesus. If your house is falling apart, try your best to hold together your family. But the devil just keeps showing up. Jesus can make a difference. I've heard of many persons who have been abused. People said, this me the last day of that. Or I would not remain in a relationship if I'm suffering like that. But Jesus turned the abuse. So that they become penitent and want God for the white family. He's able to turn around the situation. There's no other help. Now, in this world that we're living, this is the time to seek the Lord. All of us have an idea of that, you know, God is to be worshipped. But if you ask some of us, we are not ready. Now open your eyes and look around. 300 odd cases yesterday. Now, may I say something with you? Every time they do the testing, not everybody will see what the testing on. Some persons, they do not show signs or symptoms. The virus is within their bodies. But the manifestations are different. They might be ill, but they don't think it's, 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 it's the virus. It's that virus that causes it. There is no safety in saying I'm covering up with a mask. I'm helping to minimize the chance of me getting this thing. But I've heard of persons who observe all the protocols, who have not left their homes and males come here and they open up males and read and that's what they, they assume that they came into the males. So brethren, we need not take any chance. Seek him now. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The unrighteous man is going to say you need to forsake your ways. Now! The Bible tells us that this grace has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, we put away the things that are ungodly, we put away worldly love, we stop wanting this and wanting that and wanting that. And oh, bless the Lord, and, and, and the, the grace of God that we should live soberly. And that means we walk with the Lord, we walk holy, we're not walking holy. Sometimes and sometimes we, we're walking unholy. But we, we are really we, we to stay with the Lord. Continually. So 
RGR says consistently credibly. We want to walk with him every day. Brethren, those of us who have already answered the call, we have a hope. The scripture call is a blessed hope. If you miss out on that hope, blame yourself. Sometimes it's a testimony, sometimes it's a song, or the spoken words. The way God will speak to us. Not everything is for everybody, you know. Now when the word is preached, we all can see this present and be blessed, but sometimes God is very pointed. church and be comforted and just that you know say well they're having church we've got to reach their name we've got to reach those we've got to reach them only jesus alone can stop what is happening if men become converted then their hearts will become less wicked this flesh must be subjected to the spirit of god but a lot of them they don't have the spirit of god they are obeying the we have the message. We have got the truth. Yes, the undiluted truth. For we know who Jesus is. So we can't just sit down and be comforted. Someone says, You have longed for sweet peace, or the songwriter. And for faith to increase. And have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot find rest, nor be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is You have got to give God everything. It's good that you're in the house of the Lord. But if you really want to experience peace down on the inside, you have got to give God everything. So the question is asked, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Have you put everything there? Does your heart have spirit control? You can only be blessed. And have peace and sweet rest as you yield in your body and soul. Is thy heart right with God? Is thy heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly. Right in the sight of God. Are you ready to the Savior to come today? For those of us who are serving him, would Jesus say, well done? Or would he say, go away? The writer continues, my home is for the pure. The vile cannot say, we shall see the king when he only Jesus, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only He can give you peace and make you whole. Will you try Jesus today? Will you surrender to the Lord today? Will you stop holding back and just let Him have His way? He wants to save you. He wants to heal you. He wants you to have life and to have it more abundantly. 
For the scriptures declare that the thief come not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, I am come that he might have light and have it more abundantly. Do you have this hope of going to heaven? Have you done what is necessary? Have you repented of your sins? Have you decided I'm going to turn my back on that old past? God said, crucify the old man and his deeds. I'm going to stop doing these things in the world. I'm going to please God. The Bible said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. The Bible said, if you open your mouth, that confession is made. A lot of us have to say we are praying in our mind, but I want to encourage you to open your mouth and talk to God. Have you been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus? Jesus yeah. says, baptized in the name. Yeah. Have you been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus? Yeah. If you have been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and you have not received the Holy Ghost, you can receive the Holy Ghost now. Yeah. He is here. I can feel his presence. Yeah. He is already here. All you've got to do is just open up your heart. But God is already here. So I'm going to sit here and call you out your name. Are you listening? It's calling you. Come, come, come. Come unto me. All the world thing. Your birth. Will you so 
government of the day and allow him to become Lord of your life. Somebody caught a vision and said, you know, he's Lord of creation, he's Lord of, I mean, name a lot of things, but more than all, he's Lord of my life. I want to encourage you today to trust Jesus. For only He alone will take us through. Some of us who come to the house of the Lord every day and we feel the presence of the Lord, some of us might just get the virus. But guess what? If we get the virus, it's not a life sentence. How are we going to be testifying? Look what I've been through and I wasn't sick. I never sit down like others. I never have to go to the hospital. I'm not telling you to go there and just go wear the mask and expose yourselves and then expect a miracle so that you have a testimony. But we don't know. As the numbers increases, the chance of you getting it becomes greater. It therefore means that we have got to take greater care. But we don't know. But our God is able. Brethren, some of those persons that the Lord has laid on your hearts, all of them. Tell them, I just want a minute to pray with you. Pray with them. You feel like sending a text message encouraging somebody? Send the message. We don't know what people are what they're going through. And you know something, brethren, we can't say we have time. We're not sure. And it's passing, brethren. Just the other day it was Christmas. The year has just started and we're in the second month. What date is today? It's about the eighth day of February. Time is not waiting on us. Brethren, let's be awakened to the realities that we've got to do whatever God wants us to do because we're not sure about tomorrow. May God bless you today. In Jesus' name.